Uh, let's talk about Grok. So you and I are both uh, advisors and early investors. I want to point that out in the company. Um, and Grok's a really exciting one. You know, right now with the semiconductor industry under fire, um, you're seeing a lot of accelerator technology companies kind of wondering what their long-term trajectory is. Pat, I feel like we bet on a good one. Um, and Grok, uh, under the you know the company's leadership, announced over the last couple of weeks basically a partnership in depth between them and the U.S. Army and Entanglement, which is a company that partners with the Army to work on some uh, strategic AI projects. Um, and they did a big validation, and they were working on cybersecurity using what they call a Grok Node server running Entanglement software to effectively identify um, security anom anomalies. And the outcome, Pat, long and short, was a hundred. Uh, I'm sorry, was three orders of magnitude uh, faster with lower numbers of false positives. Now, this is pretty techy stuff, but just to kind of get to the the bottom line, the work in the past, and, and again, when we talk about like inferences, we talk about things like tops. These are big numbers and something trillions of ops, stuff like that. But basically, in order to you know, with the amount of data moving around the web, you have to have the ability to look at a lot of concurrent data at the same time to try to identify some type of anomaly that could bring a security risk. And if the military isn't the key example where this becomes really important, then I don't know where it is because we need to identify things as early as possible and we need the best technology to do that. Well, basically past validation reports had this type of, uh, of uh, anomaly detection at somewhere around like 120,000 inferences per second. Now you talk about three orders of magnitude. The Grok AI uh, approach with entanglement got that up to, in the test, in the validation, 72 million inferences per second. So from 120,000 to 72 million, and they believe that with this current um, technology on their workloads, that could be pushed all the way to a full 120 million uh, inferences per second. I mean, long and short, Pat, really important when you think about the types of threats the Army, other military uh, branches, and potentially the U.S. government are trying to deal with when it comes to cybersecurity. So, you know, the Army basically came out, and this is, it's not an easy thing. I think it's important we, we reiterate that. It's not an easy thing to get any U.S. Army or military or even the government to come out and, and kind of tout a single technology. Um, so it was a huge moment of validation for what is still a mid to late stage startup in Brock. Um, but effectively, just the kind of simple math here, Pat, a thousand times cybersecurity performance uh, running their system over the past technology, uh, past technology that was being used. Um, and that's, you know, they've tried everything, by the way, long and short, you know, um, you know, quantum, uh, they tried that, uh, you know, they tried to use a software hardware bridge. Um, and effectively, after all these different things they tried, they ended up with Brock tested with Grok and got this amazingly remarkable uh, performance. So, Pat, I think we picked a good one. Uh, this is a good moment. It's far from, you know, making it a hugely profitable company, but it's that kind of moment where you start turning a corner. If it's good enough for the Army, who else is it going to be good enough for? And I think this is a good indicator of their future. Yeah, this was one of the best uh, third-party attributions of what Grok has been saying for a long time. I did a... Uh, a pr really long interview with Grok uh, CEO, Jonathan Ross. I really wanted to get underneath uh, the why, like, how did you do this? And uh, he did tell a, a similar story that talked about, you know, what CPU, GPUs, and FPGAs are good at. And what he wanted to do was come up with a much lower latency uh, accelerator uh, that's essentially a, an ASIC that solved the challenge of batch size one. And essentially when we see a lot of these um, benchmarks out there, they use big batches. So latency isn't necessarily, and latency just, you know, a fancy way to say responsiveness. And how do you get great responsiveness with uh, batch size uh, one that are a lot harder to do on inference platforms based on uh, a GPU? And for everything I've seen, the Grok architecture doesn't experience any latency at batch size one, uh, and it's single-threaded, single-core architecture, really uh, has consistent performance and latency across any any batch size. And what I, it, it's funny, 
what the U.S. Army said was actually bigger than what Grok claims, who says their TSP is 2.5 times faster than any GPU-based platform at, at, at large batch and 18 times faster uh, than GPUs at batch size uh, one. So I got to love it when the manufacturer, Grok, is more conservative than a customer who, who actually uh, ran these. And that just gives me more trust uh, in the company and what the company says, because it hasn't exactly jumped into the ML perf game uh, with all um, with all limbs here, uh, like uh, people like NVIDIA has. And, you know, we just saw one from uh, Intel uh, Habana. I, I think these customer stories are actually more influential to me than than the benchmarks. And there you have it. I think Pat, that's a good assessment. By the way, I like that you mentioned some of the technical capabilities and how you got there with Jonathan. He's an incredibly smart guy. Did he show you his uh, egg timers when he was? He, no, he hasn't. No. Okay. I was out there. I actually went out to their offices and I had a conversation with them. It was just absolutely fascinating. Although I only understood half of what he said, um, and I consider myself a pretty smart guy. So <laughs> he's, he's a brilliant guy. And uh, they're building something, I think, that's going to be really special out there.